Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this week's English khutbah. The topic is dhikr of Allah and the power of Allahu Akbar. All praises are for Allah who is glorified by all that is in the heavens and the earth. The perfect, who is kamal, perfect, in his jalal, his dignity, and his jamal, his beauty who encompasses everything with his knowledge, originating everything through his absolute oneness as a manifest multiplicity. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of absolute love, adoration and worship, except Allah, the One, the utterly unique, having no partners in his oneness, the Master of all, the True, the One who clarifies and makes clear all things, and I bear witness that our master, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the slave of Allah and his messenger. O oh Allah, send your prayers, blessings and grace upon our Prophet Muhammad and upon his family, the pure, and all his companions and whomsoever follows them in the best of ways till the last day. Amma ba'd. I advise you, slaves of Allah and myself, with an awe-filled consciousness of Allah, for verily Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad, wa attaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'maloon. O you who have believed, fear Allah, and let every soul look to what it has put forward for tomorrow. And fear Allah, indeed Allah is acquainted with all that you do. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, I give you glad tidings. For the one who hears the Jum'ah or the Jum'ah Khutbah of the Prophet has right to forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَن تَوَضَّعَ فَأَحْسَنَ وُضُوعَ ثُمَّ أَتَ الْجُمْعَةَ فَاسْتَمَعَ وَأَنْصَتْ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ الْجُمْعَةِ وَزِيَادَةُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَنْ مَسَّ الْحَصَى فَقَدْ لَغَى The Prophet wasallam said that whomsoever performs his ablution well and then comes to the Friday prayer and then listens to the sermon and keeps his silence therein, he will be forgiven for whatsoever is between that Jummah and the next one with three days more. And whosoever touches pebbles or busies himself with pebbles, then he is engaged in lahu, or which is idle talk or behavior. The reference to the pebbles or lahu here implies not paying attention to the khutbah. Ayyuhal musallun, O worshippers, Allah has informed us of his rank in the Quran, wherein he says, وَلَهُ الْكِبْرِيَاءُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ and to him belongs all grandeur within the heavens and the earth. He has also informed us that everything in the world is subject to his majesty. For he says, Subhanahu huwa Allahu al-wahidu al-qahar. Exalted is he, he is Allah, the one, the all-prevailing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also informs us of his absolute omnipotence or qudra. For he says, عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ الْكَبِيرَ الْمُتَعَالِ He's the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, the grand and the exalted. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything in this world through his absolute knowledge. And it is to him that everything submits, willingly or unwillingly. As he says, وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهَا That to Allah submits whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly. And so glorified be he who ordered his messenger to make takbir of him, in other words to praise him, when he said, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ and your Lord should you glorify. And elsewhere where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the same order or same imperative to glorify him upon all of those who believe. For he says, وَكَبِّرْهُ تَكْبِيرًا And glorify him with a great glorification. 
So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in right of his immense rank has commanded us that we glorify him with the glorification that glorifies him at the expense of all besides. And this is why the phrase Allahu Akbar is the most complete phrase in the Arabic language whereby one can do justice to, to, to such glorification. Because it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than every single thing that can be fathomed. كُلُّ مَا خَطَرَ فِي بَالِكْ فَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ ذَلِكْ That every single thing that can come to your mind, Allah is greater than that. So what is the benefit of saying Allahu Akbar? What are the fadila? What is the great rank or benefits to say Allahu Akbar? Its rank with Allah, the saying of Allahu Akbar, has a rank with Allah that itself is great. And its significance is noble. For it is from the most honorable of words that could be said. And from the most beloved of remembrances that could be uttered to Allah. For the Prophet ﷺ himself said, أَحَبُّ الْكَلَامِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَرْبَعٌ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ لَا يَضُرُّكَ بِأَيِّهِنَّ بَدَأْتِ The Prophet ﷺ said that the words that are most dearest to Allah are four. Subhanallah, how glorified is Allah. Walhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. Walla ilaha illallah, and none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. Wallahu akbar, and Allahu akbar, Allah is greater. And then he later said, La yadurruka bi ayyihinna badat. It does not matter which of them you give precedence to, or which of them you say first. So we find that the phrase Allahu Akbar is from amongst the most bountiful and, and, and most beloved phrases that can be uttered in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why through it, it is narrated in Sahih Hadith that the abwab, the doors of paradise are opened. For Ibn Umar narrates that while they were praying with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one amongst them said, Allahu Akbar kabira." والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا Allah is truly great and all praise be to him in abundance وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا and may he be glorified in the morning and in the evening upon this sahabi saying this the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من القائل كلمة كذا وكذا he said, who uttered these words? And the person from amongst the people said, Ana ya Rasulullah, it is me, O Messenger of Allah. Upon which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ajibtu laha, futihat laha abwabu sama. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was amazed by these words, for the doors of heaven were opened up for it. Ibn Umar then goes on to say that since hearing the Prophet wasallam saying this, he said, I have not abandoned saying these words, which was, Allahu Akbar kabira wa alhamdulillahi kathira wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila. I have not abandoned saying these words since I heard the Prophet wasallam praising them. So we find that the takbir brings about for it good for whosoever says it. Not only in this world, but most importantly in the next. And this is why the takbir, or saying Allahu Akbar, is in and of itself considered to be from the asbab, the means by which the dua are answered. For a man came to the Prophet wasallam and he said, Teach me words that I can utter often. often. To which the Prophet wasallam responded by saying, Say there is no God but Allah, the one, having no partner with him. Allah is the greatest of the greatest and all praises due to him. Hallowed be subhanallah. And uh, how glorified is Allah, the Lord of the worlds. And there is no might and power save that of Allah, the all-powerful and the all-wise. At which point the slave said, These are all for my Lord, but what should I say in regards to me? Thereupon the Prophet ﷺ said, Qul, Allahumma aghfir li, warhamni, wahdini, warzuqni. O Allah, grant me pardon, have mercy upon me, direct me to righteousness, and provide me sustenance. In other words, that the fact that he said Allahu Akbar firstly became a suburb for him to ask dua for himself.
So dear brothers and sisters, whoever knows the value of the takbir, the value of saying Allahu Akbar, and its rank, comes to know that it is from the greatest of dhikr and reward. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab narrates that the saying Allahu Akbar is khayrun min dunya wa ma fiha, is better than everything in this world and whatsoever is in it. So whosoever grasps the immensity of these simple set of words, it should be given the glad tidings. In fact, in the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said that ما كبر مكبر قطع إلا بشر that no one, no one who glorifies engages in glorification except that he is to be given the glad tidings. And the Sahaba then said, Ya Rasulullah bil Jannah, O Messenger of Allah, is the glad tidings that he's meant to be given, the glad tidings of paradise itself? And the Prophet wasallam said, Naam, yes. So when should we make takbir? If we understand that it's reward is so immense when should we make takbir the answer is is that we should try and engage in takbir av- every moment we can as often as we can for it is a way of us expressing our deep gratitude to allah and this is the deep reason as to why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated the takbir in so much of our formal worship for we find that we say it often in prayer, we say it often in our khutbah, we say it often in hajj and in other rites and rituals. We hear it in the adhan, we hear it in the iqama. For example, we don't start the prayer except through the takbir, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, At takbiru tahrimuha wa taslimu tahliluha. That takbir is the way of entering into the prayer and taslim, saying salamu alaykum, is the way of releasing ourselves from prayer. We also find that the saying of Allahu Akbar is mentioned at the onset of the Eid al-Fitr by the sighting of the new moon. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, For you to complete the period and to glorify Allah for that of which He has guided you to, and perhaps you may be grateful. In other words, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا That you glorify Allah through Allah. Allahu Akbar and likewise concerning Eid al-Adha the day that we are about to enter upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the meat of the sacrifice does not reach Allah nor will its blood but what reaches him is the piety from you and so that likewise we have subjected the animals and the creation at large to you in order that لِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ that you make takbir, you glorify Allah through the takbir with regards to what he has guided you to وَبَشِّرِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ and give glad tidings to those who do good So we find that the phrase Allahu Akbar is something we are oft enjoined to repeat. Likewise, we find in the Prophet Wasallam's own example, whenever he would go on a safar, whenever he would go on a journey, that he would start off his journey with the dua by saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Three times he would say Allahu Akbar and then he would say the famous saf- dua as safar as we all know Subhana ladhi sakharana hadha wa ma kunna lahu muqlineen and so on which means glory be to him who has made subservient for us this this riding animal or riding vehicle and so on so the idea being that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would engage in the very moment that he sets forth on his journey by bringing the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remembrance and this is why we find sahabi such as Jabir ibn Abdullah uh, radiallahu anhu narrating that every time they would ascend they would be encouraged to say Allahu Akbar and every time they would descend they would be encouraged to say subhanallah and likewise it was the way of the Sahaba and the righteous of the Salihin of this Ummah that whenever they would come across a difficult matter they would say Allahu Akbar reminding themselves that no matter how difficult something may appear Allah's magnitude and rank would entail that he is capable of bringing success and ease to every difficult affair as he says in the Quran وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعْجِزَهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَلِيمًا قَدِيرًا 
that Allah has not caused failure by anything in the heavens and the earth, for He is over all things, alim and qadira, knowing and capable. So with this in mind, we ask ourselves, brothers and sisters, and we ask everyone listening, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we pray to Allah, that He grant us the success in making our tongues free for dhikr, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to make much takbir, to make much hamd of His jalaliyah, of His rank, and uh, that he make our hearts full of shukr, full of gratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds. And may he make us amongst those who are grateful for his favors. I say this and I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. So invoke him for forgiveness. For he is the most forgiving, the most merciful. And with that comes to an end this week's uh, English khutbah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakatuh. Cato, 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 Cato,